4,500 million years ago, our Earth, the planet you and I live on, was born. It's witnessed some dramatic changes in its time, and it's still changing today. In this, the second episode of The Difference of Dan, join me in finding out the difference between two very similar processes that have shaped our planet, weathering and erosion. In the business of our day-to-day -day lives, we often forget that as we go about our routines, we're doing it on a constantly changing planet. To us, these changes are pretty slow, but that's not to say they don't happen at all. Everywhere you look, two very important processes are happening. Weathering and erosion. Although the two processes are similar, they change the surface of the earth. They're not essentially the same. Come on, stick with me, it's not that hard. Let's start with weathering. Let's head to somewhere you and I have probably both gone in our lives. A park. But how does a park tell us about weathering? You need to be a bit of a detective. So go on, let me put your goggles on. I've got the white coat, but this I have to do. If you look carefully, you'll see it. Here we go. Rust. It may be a grim subject to you and me, but rust is a form of weathering called oxidation. It often occurs in iron laid products, and it's a reaction with oxygen that does it. Perhaps we don't need the glasses after all. I think it's safe. And who would have thought it, chemical processes happening here in what everybody thought was a safe park? It's not just chemical though. It's not as if we need to travel the whole country to find our next sign of weathering. It takes place literally everywhere. In particular, frost shattering. Water seeps into these cracks, freezes overnight and then expands, widening the crack even more. It's very obvious to see that mechanical weathering has been happening on this wall because at the bottom, if you take a sneak peek, you can see part of the wall. <laughs> this happens a lot of coasts, as does biological weathering. very far from the coastline, I'm actually in a valley in Winston. Over winter time, Winterton Valley is a safe haven for many animals and it's the burning effects of these animals that can biologically weather the area. From our three examples, we've seen how weathering takes place, what we call in situ, at that specific area. And now for something completely different, as they say. Erosion wears away the land surface, but also at the same time removes any debris in its path. Let's head south to Exmoor. Here, one of the most famous waterfalls in the area takes part in erosion. the overlying cap rock, the harder rock up there, becomes unsupported and eventually falls because of gravity. It then swells in the water in this turbulent flow and forms a plunge pool. The waterfall not only erodes the soft rock away, but transports the sediment in its course. Lower down in the river's profile, more erosion takes place, this time on the banks. As it 
it swings round, the river transporting the load will abrade the banks on this side of the river, creating what's known as a meander bend. Erosion at the coast is also significant. The Jurassic coastline here in the south of England is crumbling in many areas. And here in Norfolk, well, we've set up defences. But can we really stop these two processes occurring? But why would you want to? It's a process that's been happening for millions of years. So why stop it now? So, in summary, weathering is the wearing away of the land in situ by biological, chemical and mechanical processes. Erosion is the wearing away and the transport of the debris. It's easy when you know. <laughs>